How do we perceive the world? Is it something stable and still, or is it in constant motion? Perhaps, not only the physical world, but also ourselves, within us, are not static. We can be confused, or in a phase of transition, or even something simpler, like a change we're going through. Quitting a job, moving to another city or country, ending a relationship or starting a new one. It can also be just a thought that affects us, a subtle shift that regulates our nervous system or a memory that dysregulates us. How do we experience the world when these things occur? I wonder if our memories remain static and clear or if they evolve over time, change, becoming hazy and indistinct. As photographers and artists, how can we capture these phases of our lives, these states of mind, these transitional periods, these moments if you will? How can we capture them? Motion blur results when the image being recorded changes during the recording of a single exposure due to rapid uh, movement or log exposure. Okay, this is a definition that I found on Wikipedia. Another definition is that things appear blurred in a photograph or this. This. And this. So yeah, this is motion blur according to the definitions, but I believe that it's important to know how to use motion blur as a photographer or as an artist and how to incorporate it in our work. I think we need a pop of color, so I will just paint my nails quickly. It doesn't need to be perfect, <laughs> we just need it to you know, we just need a bow of color. It's gonna be blurred anyway, so... Okay, let's do this! To achieve motion blur, we have to set a slow shutter speed in our camera in order to allow the camera to capture the movement. It's good to use a shutter speed under 1 30th of a second and we can adjust it according to our preferences, according to our taste, to what photograph we want to take and yeah, it's a matter of, you know, trial and error until you find which one you like, which shutter speed you enjoy seeing, how much motion blur you enjoy uh, having at your photos and what you want to express. I want a dark background and so only the movement of the body will uh, be captured. I think I will put just a very dark sheet on the floor and try to take the shot. Uh, let's see how it goes. If there is plenty of light when we shoot, then we can use an anti-filter to be able to use larger apertures. One way to achieve motion blur is to move the camera as you take the photograph. You can also follow moving objects or people. But you can also keep your camera on a tripod and photograph a moving object or person. I really enjoy using motion blur in my photography, but also seeing it in other photographers' work. Some of my favorite photos have that effect and what can I say, I just, I just really like it. And I was thinking about it, why do I like it so much? It's real in a way, even though sometimes people think that um, it's a flaw or it's a mistake or even that it's easy to take a photograph like that. But I really believe that it's, it's very true. 
and raw in a way. They have that hazy and dreamy feeling that, I don't know, it's, it's captivating. <laughs> When and why we choose to use motion blur in our photography has to do with the messages we want to convey. It can capture, in my opinion, things like the transitional phases of life, the subjective nature of human experiences and relationships, the ever-changing emotions, evolving scenes, uh, the feeling of, you know, fading away, uh, but also dynamic action. These are all elements I believe can be expressed uh, with the use of motion blur. So this was the video for today, guys. If you're still here, thank you so much. I hope you liked it and I'm really looking forward to see why do you uh, use motion blur in your photography and if you like it, if you enjoy using it, and I'm really looking forward to listen to your thoughts and in the comment section. And yep, yeah, I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.